Hi, everybody. We'll be back in a minute. Good. Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us on this Friday, September 2nd, to stay curious. Behind me is the mighty rocket Artemis space launch system there with a gigantic storm going on, taken a few hours ago by Mark Usiak, our partner here at the American Space Museum. Mark was out there with... Uh, Mike Killian and Carlton Bailey, two other great friends of our museum, getting their uh, cameras back set up because they took them out there last uh, last yesterday afternoon to bring them back in. So we're ready for a 217 launch Saturday, and we're going to talk a little bit about some Artemis fever going on. Did you know they branded and named to clothing that the NASA... Uh, commentators are going to wear tomorrow and uh, we've got a couple astronaut birthdays and uh, a particularly special birthday at the end here that uh, you'll all uh, enjoy uh, remembering this wonderful person so Marty let's see we've got uh, oh I didn't print out our pictures they're over there in the tray over there would you grab them I printed our pictures out to see what our our um, uh, Thank you, Marty. It's been a crazy day around here, crazy week. Uh, we thank ARD German TV and uh, ZDE TV, the public broadcasting station, for all that they do. Thank you. That's it. Nope, nope, wait. Nope. Let me one of them bottom ones there. There you go. Wait. Okay, I guess I didn't print out the, the second bottom. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I did. All right. Well, I've got my cheat sheet here so I can see my slides that we're putting up to show you. Uh, no, that's, I'm good, Marty. I, I, I don't, that's yesterday's. Uh, yeah, that's yesterday's. I must not have printed that out, but we will rock and roll with that anyway, because we're going to look at what is landing on the moon. All right. Not, this is not landing on the moon. That is the Orion spacecraft that's going to orbit the moon or be docked at the gateway space station that's going to be orbiting the moon, hopefully just a couple years from now. So, um, Sorry to be a little discombobulated today. That's the way this Friday is after a, uh, we've been working for several weeks in a row, it seems like here, Marty. But uh, we're going to kick off with the fashion look. All right. We've got two, a couple Artemis, a couple birthdays here in a minute. But first up is the Jetsons. All right. A new look for Artemis Jetson style with the brand name Gulf Wang. All right, Marty and I profess our ignorance. We don't know this Gulf Wang uh, line of clothing uh, that is now being endorsed by NASA television. Uh, you will be seeing commentators bringing the Artemis One live launch to the public dressed in uh, Gulf Wang clothing, space age clothing, we assume there. What or who is Golf Wang? Well, that is the, um, uh, where's my notes here? Golf Wang is a brand that was founded in 2011 by musician and fashion designer Tyler the Creator. There you go, Marty. Craters, he, and they cater to streetwear and skateboarding culture. So, Ox Cart Assembly is an advertising and marketing agency that is rebranding NASA. They came up with the Launch America, all right, and they partnered to develop a new look reflecting the current fashion trends of the Artemis generation. So they've got all-weather jackets. What is really cool are the custom Chuck Taylor uh, Converse, you're going to see here in a second. Throwback wool caps. PVC emblem sourced by AB emblem, which makes a lot of uh, space patches in Weaverville, North Carolina, including the patches for our friend Tim Gagnon. Hey, Tim. I'm sure Tim's going to be running out there to get his uh, Gulf Wang uh, branded uh, Artemis clothing here. Uh, but uh, to case. All of this is a NASA's Artemis campaign to turn attention to the brand's youthful audience to the new moon missions. Well, we wonder if you even know what the spacecraft looks like that's going to land on the moon. We're going to show you that here on Stay Curious. So, other current companies that are, are branding with this Artemis launch, including RTV, Return to Vendor, 
is what that's called, Ebbet uh, Field Flannel, Velcro Companies, and Vistaprint. So you'll be seeing some advertising stuff art, uh, during the Artemis, uh, I'm assuming it's trip to the moon and the 38-day mission that's planned to orbit the moon. Jack Black is an actor that's involved with the uh, celebrity appearances you'll be seeing tomorrow. Chris Evans, Kiki Palmer, as well as special performances by Josh Groban, Herbie Hancock, and Yo-Yo Ma, who's a celloist. There's the Chuck Taylor Converse shoes representing the, um, they call that color, the horizon gradient, all right? So uh, I might own the shoes there and and uh, I'm sure that swag will be passed out tomorrow to all the VIPs. It was probably passed out uh, Sunday night, uh, but uh, definitely the uh, for Monday morning's launch that got uh, scrubbed. So maybe they'll do it all over again. So Artemis Generation, clothed in style, okay? You got to be in today's world. All right, we want to give you a shout out there for the uh, new website uh, for uh, uh, Mr. Fred Hayes. I think it's Fred Hayes. Uh, I didn't print out my notes on that either. I think it's fredhayes.com. Uh, I'm looking here. Nope. Didn't hit the print button on that. Sorry. Uh, but he was told that his book was too short. All right. Too big. Uh, and it's uh, Don't Panic. It wasn't too short. It's too much. Well, he posted on Facebook that people complained his book was not long enough and that they wanted more, so he, he, he's had a new website. Yeah, you're, you're right. What happened, he had a, he cut like about 400 pages out of his book. Oh, okay. It became too short. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, they were saying, yeah, Marty's uh, 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 read the book. Of course, knows Fred Hayes. Personally, I've met Fred Hayes many times personally. Awesome man. And uh, he's got a website now that's at the bottom there of, our, of my name there, Marty. Yeah, the book is Don't Panic Too Early. The book is Don't Panic Too Early. And boy, is that a good good uh, theme for the Apollo 13 astronauts because they didn't. And they were lucky this guy knew every nut and bolt on that lunar module built by Grumman because that was his job as an astronaut was to know everything about it. So Fred, Fredo, glad that you got a new website, fredhayes.com. Uh, his whole life history is on there. And put on your bucket list the Infinity Museum at the border of Louisiana and Alabama because uh, uh, that's his museum there at the border. Uh, they take tours up to the uh, uh, Stennis uh, rocket facilities up there. Well, our birthdays today, happy birthday to two ESA astronauts, okay? Claude Nicolier and uh, Germain, uh, uh, the German Gerhard Thiel, all right? Switzerland's first astronaut, Claude Nicolier, born in Vevey, Switzerland on September 2nd, 1944. That makes him 78 years old. He spent 43 days in space. Uh, on four shuttle missions, including two service missions of the Hubble. Quite an experienced uh, astronaut. Uh, like I said, uh, in the shuttle days, about uh, seven to ten days of flight, he was on four of them, 43 days. So hope he's enjoying his 78th birthday. Uh, he was joined NASA as an agreement between ESA and the first Switzerland astronaut to go up. And... Uh, and he's the first non-American to become a full-time a NASA astronaut. So, Claude Nicolier, happy birthday to you. And Gerhal, Gerhard uh, Julius Paul Thiel, oh, right uh, there, was born um, September 2nd, 1953 in Heide, Heidenburn and der Brenz. Boy, I, I can really slaughter a language, can I, Marty? <laughs> and in by under Brins, Germany. All right. He's got uh, uh, SS, STS-99, a, a radar topographic mission uh, to his credit. And he's involved in ESA's human space flight and strategic outreach uh, uh, back in the... Uh, the uh, until about 2013 when he retired. So happy 69th birthday to Gerhard Thiel there. 
All right, Marty, I've got a little out of sequence here, I guess. The Artemis SLS mission that we're all getting excited to see. Let me back up here to this shot. Well, no, let me not do that. Let me go there and get rid of the picture. There's Artemis on the pad. And what's it going to do its first uh, few minutes of flight? Well, this is the profile of it. Hopefully, we'll get it launched tomorrow afternoon. People are already over at Space View Park getting getting uh, their place staked out. A lot of news media there. Marty's going to be there selling t-shirts. Thank you for doing that, Marty. So you see, this is about the first 20 minutes of the flight plan. Once it gets up, those SRBs uh, go away about two minutes. Then the, uh, the protective cap over the Artemis spacecraft itself with the, the uh, uh, escape tower is jettisoned. And then the four SSME engines that once flew on the space shuttle are going to fly for about, uh, when are they jettisoned, Marty? That looks like 17 minutes. No, I think it's still going to be eight, half. Eight, eight, eight minutes and 30 seconds. So eight minutes, 30 seconds is when the four engines and then they shut off and then they dump in the Indian Ocean, the big orange fuel tank. And then the second stage... All right, built by, gosh, was that built by Rockwell who or, or Northrop Grumman, the uh, second stage there? I don't know that, but I'll look at that, so why guess? But the second stage is what's going to propel them to Earth. After they have a, uh, a, a loop around the Earth, then translunar injection, something that we haven't heard uh, on a uh, spacecraft since 1972 will happen. We've heard it on the lunar reconnaissance orbiters, but not a spacecraft that's to be crewed next time we launch this. What's the terminology change? It should be translunar trajectory. Translunar trajectory. T T T. is when you get to the moon. Okay, translunar trajectory. Okay. And uh, so that's what's going to happen. But what is going to land on the moon? All right. There you've got the Artemis headed to the moon. It looks like they've got it going uh, directly, Marty. 20 uh, minutes uh, into the flight, they've got it separated from the second stage. So, sorry I didn't look up that part of it because there's not a lot published about this, but I wanted you to understand that Orion is not going to land on the moon. That was going to land on the moon, the contract's been given to SpaceX. And our friend Mark Usiak is out there. He photographed this from... Uh, the uh, wildlife uh, refuge that is the Artemis rocket there the SLS rocket and in the background about a mile and a half away is the gantry for the uh, pad 2 I mean pad 39A Artemis is on 39B all right both were shuttle and Apollo uh, pads well, what they're building on the gantry there is a pad to launch the what they call the BFF Big friggin' rocket, all right, and on top of that will be the starship that's going to land on the moon. So that's what we wanted to show you a little bit today about. On the left, out there at Boca Chica, Texas, on the, the coast near Brownsville, the east coast of Texas on the Gulf of Mexico, is this behemoth of a rocket. How big is it? 50 meters times 3 feet for you Americans is over 300 feet. So play football on this or a soccer pitch, all right, from one end to the other. That is the size of this. Here's the SLS on the other side, all right, just a, a, a bit shorter. I mean, a little bit uh, taller than that, actually, in the scale. On the left is what's going to land on the moon, all right. And here's what it's going to look like landed on the moon. Marty, and I'm, 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 I'm uh, my name below me, is, or the space history is going to block out the picture of the Apollo, probably, the, the lunar module. But this is going to land on the moon upright, and there you see an elevator system to bring down rovers, people. All right, this is how Elon Musk's SpaceX is planning on doing it. And they, they we're sure the 2024 date will slip, but we're talking uh, maybe three years on this, all right? So here is the... Uh, again, another close-up. Thank you, Mark Usiek of SLS. And in the background is the gantry for this uh, launch of the space uh, starship. 
either to the moon or Mars. It's just, the the uh, BFF, they call it, the booster, is just to get it up to Earth orbit. And then it's got, uh, this BFF has got something like over 30 engines on it. And here is the concept of it. All right, this is a uh, photo, a, a, uh, a concept image, all right, that I pulled off the internet. It looks real for sure. You got some starships in the background. This is what that pad being built at pad 39A is going to look like with the starship on top, and below it is the booster. Uh, and there's plans to even make both of these even bigger. This will hold about 200 people. Uh, up there in the cabin at the top where the windows are. And uh, there's plans to have a starship that will hold a thousand people to colonize uh, Mars. Uh, the gantry's going up quick. You can see it easily from nine miles away here at the shores of uh, the Indian River. And there's a picture of it out at Boca Chica. Uh, actually, over a year ago, this is a year ago, where they put a Starship dummy, that's the black, on top of the BFF rocket. All right, that's going to have like 30-some engines on it. And they did a test fire of it. There's another look at what that looks like in a, uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a photo where they actually stacked them. They've not done a static test or anything yet, but it's basically a fit check. Because, uh, incredibly... Uh, you see the middle middle uh, uh, gantry there. That, those are actually jaws that are going to catch this when it comes when it it puts the space starship SpaceX starship in orbit. The BFF is going to come back to its original launch pad and it's going to be caught by those clamps there and held in place. This is some incredible technology. Here is the. Static fire test, August 9th, I believe, this year. Just one engine of the 30-some engines uh, was fired to just give a, a test real quick of uh, the uh, fueling it and the pipes and everything. But that's a live static test. Here's how it stacks up. All right. There's your Saturn V rocket. So you can put your SLS, uh, Artemis rocket, right beside the Saturn V. All right, it's just a little bit shorter, the SLS is. But there is Elon Musk's Star, uh, uh, Falcon 9 rocket compared to his Starship. All right, it's got a bigger uh, diameter, uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be amazing. This is going to be incredible to see this launched. And there you can just barely see on top of uh, my nameplate there is the Apollo Lunar Module. Thanks, Marty. There's my desk. See the Apollo Lunar Module there? What, uh, what's in the way there? Here, get that out of the way. Really, you see my working desk here. But uh, there's the lunar module right there that Marty helped build. And then over here, some people. Look at that. The lunar module is 23 feet above the surface at the top. All right. So this is 300 feet. And uh, you're going to have to have a big rope or a long ladder if that elevator doesn't work. This is what's landing on the moon. It's got to get to the gateway for the Uber of the Orion to take people up there. Is Orion going to be the only way to take uh, human beings to the moon, uh, to the gateway that will get in the Starship? No. The SpaceX, uh, uh, although they, they're, they're going to try to take people to the moon in the gateway in the Starship, uh, they could build more of the Crew Dragon. Actually, I think they built the last uh, several of them because they want to devote everything to this starship. Musk has crashed a several of them. I mean, like a half a dozen of them. He landed one of them. Uh, you can see on YouTube uh, when you're checking out American Space Museum on YouTube and our Stay Curious broadcast, uh, you can see the SpaceX starship and its progress uh, over the past year or so. So... Uh, he's not afraid to crash his, his uh, and waste money. Actually, I think there was 19 or 20 um, Falcon 9s that crashed before he finally, with the last dollars he had, stuck that last landing. Here's a little bit of more data. All right, you got your payload area with people. There you got your 50 millimeters, 22 millimeters is basically where the people are for the airlock. I mean, 22 meters, I mean. Uh, and uh, uh, there you've got your tanks, all right, uh, hydrogen and oxygen tanks, okay? So you need enough fuel to get off the moon, the whole thing.
all right everything get off the one six gravity of the moon go back over to the gateway there'll be a fueling station there somewhat to fuel it up again and i've seen videos where the plan is to launch two or three of these and hook them all together all right they could even have uh, tunnels between them once you hook them uh, together and then everybody goes to mars together so incredible dreaming going on here this is not what's going to land on the moon this was the proposal by uh, blue origin northrop grumman and some other companies involved they were bid out by elon musk starship there this is the idea though apollo lunar module on steroids would seem like the more convenient way to get down to the surface and so forth so i don't know if bezos and blue origin these other companies are maybe trying to build prototypes of these on their own just in case you know but it's a wide open now private industry in space once they find gold on the on the moon man you'll you'll see a new gold brush right marty there again is the, is the uh, Starship on the moon to be launched on the BFF first stage booster. And this might never come back to Earth again. All right. Just stay out there at the gateway, orbiting the moon or go on to Mars. And like we talked about earlier this week on Stay Curious, this was a concept 61 years ago by a NASA engineer named Jim Chamberlain, a real brilliant rocket scientist, to take the two-man Gemini to the moon. And he thought we could land on there like 1968, 69, easy with the two-man Gemini that we had 10 missions in 66 and 65. So cool concept, huh? And here is the dream for Elon Musk to be on colonies on Mars, all right, living in habitats. Uh, I'd say most of it ought to be underground uh, for radiation. So, all right, let's see here. I wanted to go into segue to this. Uh, we want to remind you about the launch this weekend. We hope it goes off as planned. This will be a lot of people coming on the Space Coast, so if you're one of them, be kind to everybody and be kind to Ozzy Osbourne, the rocket hobo out there. He gives a good commentary, has the countdown for everybody, and uh, he's on a fixed income. So if you're out there, throw a few bucks in his, his jar out there. But uh, Ozzy's 72 years old and lost track of how many launches he's seen, but he saw them from the Apollo era all through and he's out there for all the unmanned launches. So bless your heart, Ozzy. We're glad you're out there. I was out there uh, this afternoon to take a little picture for you there on the gazebo in Space View Park. And a fella there in the far left, Marty, caught a, caught a fish while I was out there. Uh, so uh, there you see it dangling on its hook over there on the far left. Artemis is right there by my head. Oh, there, move at her. Oh, whoa. Move me around move there. Around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was gonna, Marty's going to show you the fish on the hook there on the far left there. And the Artemis in the background, it looks good. It, you know, it's uh, nine miles from where we're at, that launch pad. So it's going to be spectacular. All right. And that's okay, Marty. I just got it. Oh, you just got it? Okay. There you go. There's a fish on the hook there, out there. And saw some other people out there looking through binoculars. People are already staking their, their claim out there. I love seeing people out there, you know, 24 hours early. And then when the throng comes on, the, the half hour before the launch, people just, they, it's just like they're teleported there. You're there for hours and all of a sudden, right, Marty, you're teleporting. You go, Whoa, where'd all these people come from? And uh, so then some people get discouraged that someone might be standing in front of them, whatever. You're going to see it. In fact, I don't even think I'm going to be on the shore. Uh, if you want to find me, I think I'm going to be over here with President Kennedy and watch it go up, Marty. It should go arc way. It should arc right through that A for Apollo with the moon and Earth. President Kennedy on the bottom there is Neil Armstrong's handprints. Uh, it'll arc as a streak because of the solid rocket booster uh, plumes that will be uh, g going on. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that might be my spot. So I'll let you know. So stay curious to see where I take my tourist shot of tomorrow's uh, 217 launch of the Artemis 1 rocket. 
And we hope everything goes well because then next is going to be Artemis 2. They will have be crewed and they'll orbit the moon. And then hopefully we'll have the starship ready to land on the moon for Artemis 3. Right, Leslie Day and Carlton Bailey, thank you for watching. I had a special shout out here to Tom Straub. Thank you, Tom, for your kind comment yesterday. Marty, Tom Straub's, and he lives in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. He said, thanks for the great content. And that means a lot to us, Tom. We do try hard to have some things that nobody else is talking about or straighten you out about things that people are talking about, like what are we going to land on the moon with? And now you know. So, well... I wanted to end our program with a little little sad note and a happy note to remember the birthday today of Krista McAuliffe. Krista McAuliffe would have been 74 years old today, born uh, September 2nd, 1948 in Boston, Massachusetts, growing up in Concord, New Hampshire. Of course, she's inspired millions of students and teachers around the world. And I found this little piece here uh, William Whiting and, and Boiler Hat and Dave Stangy out there, uh, uh, Adrian Padrock, uh, we're uh, happy to have you on there. Hazel Banks, good to see Hazel come from there. Tom Celentano and Tom and Mark Usiak, of course, are watching. Leslie Day, uh, and thank you, Hazel Banks, for watching. We've missed Hazel, but she's been a uh, traveling lady. So, uh, Reading this and writing about this and thinking about this lady, I get verklept and 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 it, it's because uh, this is an amazing uh, person uh, just for what she represented. So People Magazine in February after the January 28th, 1986 disaster that killed uh, Krista McAuliffe and six other astronauts, she was truly the first tourist to, uh, or, or citizen to go to space. Uh, after this mission, they wanted the CBS reporter Dan Rather to go, Pablo Casals, a celloist, photographer, salesman, all kinds of people they thought could go and talk about the beauty of space and then basically sell uh, uh, loads for this space truck to take to space. So this is quite a moving piece, I think, that whoever the writer is for People Magazine wrote, and it was this, quote, Krista McCullough's mission, no matter how NASA described it, was simple. She set out to awaken the, the, the pioneer spirit in Americans, especially students, by demonstrating the space program was accessible to everyone. She didn't possess the icy control of a fighter pilot or the intense intellect of an astrophysicist. She was closer in spirit to the first brave passenger to step onto a cloth wing commercial airliner. Krista McAuliffe was a woman with a job, a husband, and two kids. And when she volunteered for the program, she didn't know much about the space shuttle other than uh, it flew like a rocket and landed like an airplane. There was one thing special about Krista McCullough. She viewed life as an excitement of possibilities, not as a series of obstacles. And America came to see in Krista's op optimism what was great about our nation. God bless Krista McCullough. So with that, Marty, thank you for a wonderful show. I'm privileged to be part of this wonderful museum, the American Space Museum, where we preserve the birth of America's tremendous space age, honor all of our astronauts and people like Krista McCullough are never forgotten in our museum. With that, I hope to see you soon. I'm Mark Marquette, bridging the space between us.